Hey, what's up guys? This is Mario back again with another trade video. Uh, today I'm going to go over a trade uh, that I did make on Baidu stock. Uh, Baidu is a uh, search engine uh, from China, very similar to what Google does. They do the same thing in, uh, in China, but over there they call it Baidu, uh, very similar type of business. But they had a, been going up huge in the last couple of days uh, based on some news uh, that they're going to look or go into the EV space, the electric vehicle space. Uh, Chinese stocks like uh, NIO, XPEB, and Li all been skyrocketing. Uh, so because of this, um, uh, and, uh, excuse me, B Baidu had a huge move on Tuesday, uh, but in my opinion, that move was overextended. Uh, so there was, they presented a great opportunity to short that move because all based on speculation. Uh, so I'm gonna go over uh, the trade, uh, go over the news, uh, the charts and go over how I day traded that, that, that trade and how I was able to make a profit on, on that news. Uh, so, hey, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. Let me share my screen and let's get started. All right. So, uh, Baidu. So, here's the uh, daily chart on Baidu. Uh, this is the one year, actually, six month chart. And uh, it's been, uh, it's been consolidating uh, around below the 144 and it finally broke above that. And on this day on the 15, which was uh, Tuesday, there was this news that Biden was considering going into the electric vehicle manufacturing space. Uh, so here's actually an article from, uh, from Yahoo Finance uh, where you kind of get more information about it. And now here, if you read this, it says China's China's Baidu reportedly planning foray into electric vehicle manufacturing. Uh, so, uh, so Baidu shares a fire, were a fire on Tuesday following reports of the Chinese search engine interest in lucrative field of electric vehicle manufacturing. Uh, so pretty much right now, Baidu is in talks with automakers regarding manufacturing of his own electric vehicle. Um, and again, this is a, a report from Reuters Ro uh, uh, and it's citing three people with knowledge of the matter. So the company is exploring the possibility of either contract manufacturing or for forging a majority owned joint venture with automakers such, such as uh, Saging Gailey Holdings Group or Ganzo Automotive Group and China FAW Group Corp. Um, now, the reason why this is important, guys, is because of the electric vehicle man, uh, manufacturing space or, or the stacks. Now, stocks like uh, Tesla, you know, we all seen Tesla has been going skyrocketing. Uh, Neo, another one. Now, this is the Chinese, of course, electric vehicle space. Have huge moves in the last six months or more. Axpev, another Chinese vehicle sp uh, company, another huge move, and also Li. So there's def definitely been uh, a, a uh, premium been paid on companies who are in the electric vehicle space, uh, including Tesla. So Baidu, when they announced that, of course, investors loved that news. So there was a huge move on Tuesday, and it was followed by another move yesterday. Uh, but again, it was an exhaustion type of move. It was all speculative. Um, and if, if you look at the uh, Bollinger Band, which is something that I kind of look at before I consider stock being overextended, it definitely broke above the Bollinger Band. Not only that, but actually traded uh, around uh, more than twice uh, the the uh, relative volume. So let me kind of go over the relative volume on Baidu. So let me go Baidu, there you go. So if you look at the relative volume, it was above, uh, above two. So it traded two times more the average volume. The average volume is around 4.36 million. So definitely there is some speculative type of trading moving there, try to speculate type of move. Um, and now this is just based on today, but yesterday, if you look at the, the, the volume, it traded over 32 million, so way over two times the average volume. So the way I saw it, um, I, I was actually considering as a short uh, yesterday, but I felt like I wanted to kind of see the chart to tell me what to do. Uh, so there was a, a, a exhaustion gap and there was a blow off type of move um, here at the, was, sorry about that, and here in the, in the intraday chart, when you see this kind of like huge a parabolic move in the, in the open and it starts to fade and it kind of goes below the volume weight advantage price, which is this purple line, you know that this is definitely an exhausted move and it's pretty much ready. It pretty much already blew up. So whoever was speculating it took their profits um, and that was pretty much it. So today, 
Um, and if you actually look at the daily chart, you know, see how it looks. Um, you know, it looks like a, a almost like a doji candle or a uh, almost inverted hammer candle. So today, I, I was kind of looking for a first rate that type of trade, first red day, first red day type of trade, but um, I did not like that it actually went red pre market. So there was volume pre market that that, that uh, showed it was already going, went red. So I wasn't really sure how to trade it. Um, the only thing that I was thinking is hopefully we're getting some consolidation and then we break down and then hopefully we kind of break down to like 180 or below that. Um, but as soon as we got a strong open and it started to kind of go parabolic, I felt like, you know what, midpoint is a, is a really good uh, resistance level. I think if it hits that midpoint, we're going to get a continuation of that fade. Um, and I wasn't even considering shorting more on 185 because 185 is also a very, very important level here in the intraday chart. So the midpoint and 185 were my levels. Uh, I did get in on 195. And again, I was considering uh, shorting again at one, uh, excuse me, I did get in at the midpoint, 182.35. I was considering shorting at the 195 level. Uh, didn't quite get there. It started to kind of reverse and it started to fade. And I decided to cover uh, below the midpoint, uh, close to the 188 level, another important level. And that was pretty much, I got my two to one versus reward and I was pretty much done with the trade. Uh, so I actually, if you think about it, this is more, uh, more of a um, low hanging fruit short uh, type of trade, especially because um, the way it opened, it opened uh, red and it went red to green and then re uh, and green to red again. So. It was a really interesting trade, but I felt it was, again, a lot of speculative money in the last couple of days uh, based on the news uh, that it was going to go into the electric vehicle space. So I wanted to take advantage of that additional volume and kind of short on those pops on the second day continuation move to the downside. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you guys have any questions about this trade, uh, feel free to ask them uh, down below in the YouTube comments. Um, I know uh, a lot of you guys have asked me already, maybe uh, kind of go over these trades before the before I actually execute them. Uh, but the thing about that is that when you're trading live, you don't have time for that. You are focused in the market. You're constantly looking at the market. You're preparing your watch list. You're preparing your levels to get in, get out. You're looking at your risk management. Uh, so making a YouTube video, um, it's kind of tricky. So. Uh, that's why I would kind of make these videos to kind of go over my thought process, what I was thinking, and why I made the decisions I made. So I uh, hope you guys learned something from this video. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and you guys will hear from me soon. Have a good one, guys. Take care.